Okay, good morning everyone. I'm Professor Julien Tailleb. I'm working in the Georges Pompidou Euro European Hospital in Paris. And I will uh, once again address this question that has been already uh, discussed uh, previously uh, last year and the year before, I think. I have no disclosure to declare for this presentation. So, as you know, in colorectal cancer, there are two major pathways for carcinogenesis. There is the chromosomic instability for the vast majority of the patient, and for 15% of the patient, we have the genetic instability, calling also MSI. You can see here all the different uh, putative or proved alteration that are uh, uh, happening early or later in the carcinogenic process. And you can see also that this deficient MMR uh, seen in MSI patients lead to mutation on target genes and to cancer at the end. In this group of colorectal cancer patients with MSI uh, tumors. One third is linked to an hereditary uh, disease, the Lynch syndrome, and two thirds are sporadic, leading to late cancer during the life and no other cancer as compared to Lynch syndrome, or you know that there are many other cancers, and especially gynecologic cancer for the women. In the sporadic uh, case, uh, BRAF mutations are seen in approximately half of the patients, and this is also a data that you must uh, know. How can we determine this MSI status? Initially, it was molecular biology and little by little immunohistochemistry testing the four proteins of the MMR uh, uh, complex uh, are tested more and more often in centers. And molecular biology is done together with the immunohistochemistry or after to confirm it eventually. So a lack of a protein expression in immunohistochemistry uh, signs the MSI profile. And you got the molecular biology uh, uh, plots seen on this figure. What is important to know also is that in 96% there is a good concordance in these two techniques and that immunohistochemistry is quite safe to practice. Another important data is to see that, uh, contrary to the KRS mutation, for example, the MSI is uh, very rare in the metastatic disease, more frequent in stage 3 colon cancer, and even more frequent in stage 2. 10% in stage 3, 20% in stage 2, so it will also um, lead to the fact that we have quite many data in stage 2, less data in stage 3, and very few data in stage 4, finally. So, is the determination of MSI status uh, useful in colorectal cancer first? To uh, screen a genetic disease, to uh, find a prognostic marker, meaning in relation with the natural history of the disease, or to find a predictive marker, meaning in relation with the treatment that you are given uh, to your patient? The answer is clearly yes. What for to screen the Lynch syndrome? It seems obvious to test its pronostic impact in stage two and in stage three, and the literature is a little bit different for these two stages, and to test its predictive value for sensitivity to 5-FU, but also to oxaliplatin in GI adjuvant setting. So for the genetic disease screening, I thank Ramon Salazar, who gave me his slide from last year. I think this is exactly the same this year. We can use immunohistochemistry. If you have uh, altered expression of MLH1, you can test the BRAF mutation. If you have BRAF mutation and MLH1 only missing, it's probably not a Lynch syndrome. If you have MLH1 and BRAF mutation lacking or MSH2, MSHTs or PMS2 lacking, then you have to go to germline genetic testing to confirm the Lynch syndrome. If immunohistochemistry is normal, then you can uh, not test, of course, germline. Concerning the prognostic value, um, clearly MSI seems prognostic in this meta-analysis published in the GCAO by Popa and Al in 2005. Out of 32 studies, almost 8,000 patients, al almost 1,300 MSI patients, you can see that the vast majority of the study show that the MSI group, uh, the forest plot, sorry, for MSI is on the left side of the one link. And if you are focusing on stage two and three uh, patient, it's even more obvious. Altogether, there is a prognostic role for MSI for stage two and three, and there is a risk of death decrease of 35% in this patient as compared to the MSS patients. 
This uh, uh, study published in GUT one year before is interesting because it is focusing only in uh, small stage 2 tumors, stage 2A, T3, and 0. And what is important in this very selected population, even if the number of patients is not very important, is to see that the upper curve for MSI patients shows a very, very good prognosis from the patient. So it means that if you got a stage 2, even with high risk uh, except for the T4 and 0, but even with other high risk factor of relapse, the prognosis in MSI patient is so good that probably adjuvant chemotherapy is never useful in this population. We also have these data from Dan Sargent from the Mayo Clinic, pooling stage two and three and showing the clear prognostic impact of MSI. Yellow curve, DMMR and MSI are the same. Concerning the predictive value, it's a little bit more confused. As you can see here from the literature, you got about 10 to now 12 trials. And you can see that in the green slot, it means that there is a benefit of chemotherapy in MSI patient. In the red slot, there is no benefit from chemotherapy. And you can see that it's mixed, even if it seems that no benefit is more often seen than benefit. A meta-analysis has been performed by Gaetan de Getz in the uh, European Journal of Cancer in 2009, showing that probably the no benefit uh, is winning in this uh, first uh, pooled analysis. And uh, Dan Sargent also uh, took some previous trial and his own uh, database and showed that for stage 3 patient there is no benefit of 5-FU adjuvant therapy, and that for stage 2 per patient there is even a deleterious effect or a trend to the deleterious effect uh, of chemotherapy by 5-FU. To complexify the stuff, the same team from the Mayo Clinic showed uh, with Frank Sinicrop that probably that sporadic MSI and genetic MSI are not the same, and that hereditary HNPCC or Lynch syndrome with suspected germline mutation in this trial because uh, the Lynch syndrome was defined with BRAF and immunohistochemistry as said before, so it's not uh, full germline assessment, uh, genetic assessments, but you can see here that 5-FU seems to be beneficial in this patient and that it is not the case in patients with the sporadic MSI colorectal cancer. And to uh, complexify a little bit, this last publication from the UK that makes us a little bit more confused, showing that finally in stage 2 colon cancer, it seems to have a benefit in MSI patients from the chemotherapy, which are totally contradictory to the one presented by surgeon. However, altogether, it seems clearly that there is a lack of benefit, at least in patients uh, uh, treated by 5-FU when they are MSI, and I think that this can be one of the conclusions. This seems quite clear for stage 2, maybe a little bit less clear for stage 3. However, 5-FU is interesting, but uh, the current standard for adjuvant chemotherapy is often Falfox in the vast majority of our patients and in normally in all stage 3 patients able to receive this combination chemotherapy. So we address in the first work this question with uh, Aziz Zanan in, his, uh, in the laboratory of the St. Antoine Hospital and showing that uh, uh, there is a benefit of oxaliplatin in this small sample of patients uh, of about 7% in the MSS group, and that this uh, benefit was even greater in the MSI group. Once again, it's a small series of patients. This is not a randomized control trial, but this uh, let's suggest that finally maybe oxaliplatin restores the sensitivity to chemotherapy to the, of this MSI tumor. We then go further by testing a more uh, consequent cohort of 303 patients and looking only if in all these patients were stage 3, all these patients were treated with Folfox, but if the prognostic value uh, of uh, um, uh, MSI status was restored in this patient, and this was the case suggesting once again that oxaliplatin may uh, bypass the resistance to 5-FU of this MSI tumor. And finally, this year, we have uh, been able to read one publication in clinical cancer research and one communication at ASCO with the real interesting data, meaning the randomized trial testing 5-FU and 5-FU plus oxaliplatin, the C07 and SABP trial, which was pulled to the C08. I remind you that the C07 was testing 5-FU uh, 
bolus and uh, 5-FU bolus plus oxaliplatin in the FLOX regimen. It was the second trial positive for oxaliplatin in the adjuvant setting in stage 3 patient. And the C08 was testing this time a fall FOX or a Folfox plus bevacizumab. So we have patients treated here with 5-FU, patients treated with Flux, treated with Folfox, and treated with Folfox and bevacizumab. And in this pooled analysis, what we can see here in the forest plot is that we got uh, an MMR status and an MSI status that is uh, uh, of good prognosis for time to recurrence, for overall survival, but not for survival after relapse. And the last line of the slide, more important, that the interaction test show no difference between oxaliplatin, uh, between sorry, MSI and MSS for oxaliplatin sensitivity, suggesting that the benefit is similar in uh, MSI and MSS uh, for oxaliplatin adjunction. More recently, at, uh, one month ago at ASCO, uh, Jean-Francois Flejou reported uh, as a poster discussion this uh, uh, results from the Mosaic trial. Mosaic was comparing LV5FU2, the Digramon regimen, to uh, the Folfox regimen. Um, there were 2,200 patients, 1,000 blocks were uh, uh, able to be uh, collected, and as you can see here, there is no major difference in terms of relapse-free survival, in terms of disease-free survival, or in terms of overall survival in patients for which the blocks are available and for patients for which the blocks are not available, suggesting that these groups are comparable. Out of this 1,000 blocks, you can see here that Altogether, for overall survival, it seems that Folfox curve is better than the 5FU curve in MSI patients, mixing stage 2 and 3, even if the difference is not significant because of the low number of patients, a little bit less than 100 patients altogether. When separating stage three and stage four, and stage two, sorry, you can see here that the difference seems clear in stage three and less clear in stage two with a very low number of patients in both groups that time. So the conclusion from the authors were that uh, this translational analysis from the mosaic trial show as a ratio in favor of Folfox, but that the low DMMR prevalence uh, in stage two and three cancer limits the conclusive evidence and the significant statistical significance of these results. But however, maybe we can recommend Folfox in M MSI patient for stage three, probably not today for stage two. So to conclude, I won't go in left and right colon cancer, in BRAF, mutated and white type, because it will complexify more and more the, 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 the picture. But you have to know that MSI colon cancer is a net heterogeneous group. It's rare and it's heterogeneous. That's why it's so difficult to have conclusive results in this population, because Lynch syndrome and sporadic are not the same. BRAF muted and white type are probably not the same even, and other subgroups with left, right, gender, male, female, etc., will probably not be the same also. MSI studies are difficult because of the low incidence of this characteristic, studied in different stages of the disease, two and three for the vast majority of the publication, but some publication also in stage four and stage one, and with different standard treatment over time. We will never have again comparison of 5-FU and 5-FU oxaliplatin in the adjuvant setting, and the only data we will have until the end of time is probably the mosaic and an SABP C07, and that's also why we ask for a publication of the curves, curves with the log rank for the C07, which seems very important to us to compare them to mosaic. But MSI is a genetic marker useful to screen out Lynch syndrome, this is clear, and I think it shall be done in any patient operated in your center of a colorectal cancer of less than 60 year old. MSI has also a clear prognostic value for stage two colorectal cancer, even if it's less conclusive for stage three. It seems to be the case also for stage three, but for stage three, you don't have any issue. For stage two, this very good prognosis is important not to decide adjuvant chemotherapy, even in iris stage two, probably. MSI seems predictive of resistance to 5-FU, more once again in stage two than in stage three. In exploratory analysis, this has to be confirmed. And Folfox, since this year, seems as efficient in MSI than in MSS tumors. There are still unanswered questions. For example, you got a T4 and zero stage two patient with MSI uh, and over bad prognosis, prognostic sorry, factor. I really don't know what to propose to this patient, but Happily for us, it's quite rare. 
uh, stage three patient contraindicated to oxaliplatin, shall we determine MSI to limit uh, to, to, to limit the chemotherapy in this patient because to give 5-FU to a stage 3 uh, with MSI status may be useless. So to go in the algorithm, it's quite simple in your daily practice. If you got a stage U, you test MSI with this stage 2. If it's MSI, no chemotherapy because of good prognosis and resistance to 5-FU. If it's a microsatellite stable, then chemotherapy may be discussed in your pluridisciplinary staff. And for stage 3, currently no testing uh, systematically MSI and 4-FOX is the standard therapy. We need to go further, and now in the future, I have heard that NSABP uh, data and mosaic data will be pulled soon, and we are going to pull also the PETAC-8 and the NCZTG-1 and 0147 together in order to have huge cohort of patients and to try to improve our knowledge on this subject. Thank you for your attention.